Hello dudes, dudettes, duders, and everyone in between. Today we're doing a full review of the Color Spikes by Bitbanger Labs. In this video, we'll go over what's included in the Shooters Bundle, which is currently available on their website. What the specs of the lights are, and my personal opinions on where the product excels and where it falls short. First, what is a Color Spike? It's a multicolor LED rod designed and built by Bitbanger Labs. Through a clever combination of different colored LEDs, it can produce fairly powerful light anywhere from 3200 Kelvin to 5500, as well as a full rainbow of high saturation colors. They operate at a maximum of 1400 lux at one meter. What you're seeing here is one color spike one meter away from my head at maximum brightness. We're shooting this on a Blackmagic Pocket 6K at 400 ISO with an aperture of 2.8 and a shutter angle of 180 degrees. The kit comes with a carrying case, barn doors, a power brick and wall plug, a whatever this is, a light stand stud adapter, a stud adapter adapter, and a sheet of diffusion. As far as LED rods go, it's quite a starter kit and will get you up and running on day one. The lights really come to life when you take advantage of their multicolored LEDs to create incredibly rich, colorful patterns. While some of the colors feel better than others, none of them feel cheap or tawdry. Every color feels like that color. That said, the blues, reds, and greens are simply richer than some of the in-betweens. Whether you're using the 3200 lights, the 5500, or the color splashes, all the LEDs are very consistent internally and across multiple spikes, and they work just as well for still photography as they do for video and slow motion. While they're good lights, they only become great when you download the app and connect. Connection is done via Bluetooth, and I was surprised at how easy it was. You open the app, and it finds your spikes. Once connected, you can synchronize them, group them, operate them individually, and even chain animations across multiple spikes. It's all very intuitive and responsive and feels about as tactile as an app ever can. They come with a wide selection of pre-built animations, but you can also design your own patterns, and the tools for this are surprisingly robust. You'll move quickly between learning the interface, building your own animation, and then fine-tuning it to get exactly what you want. You can start from scratch, or you can open one of their presets, noodle with it, and save it as a new animation. This is one of my greatest joys regarding modern equipment. The devices work well out of the box, and then you get extra worlds of creative functionality that are entirely software-based. It's like free day one DLC for your gear. For all of the things that these lights do right, and there's a lot they do right, there are things that don't hit the mark. First, there's the range on the app. I lose the lights on the app at about 15 feet. It's not all the time, and the further away I get, the more likely I am to lose connections, but if you have to be 10 feet away from the lights for the app to work, it's not so much a remote controller as it is a tethered device with an invisible cord. Of course, this connectivity can easily be affected by the model of phone you're using, whatever case you have on it, and environmental factors, so I don't know that it's so much an issue with the color spikes. It's just something that you should be aware of going in. Beyond that, there are serious issues with the design of the actual light. While the unit itself feels well-built and machined, there are several glaring design flaws, all of which feel like the result of a designer going overboard on their own fascinations and not really considering what the end user experience is going to be like. The first concern is being able to attach this device to a light stand. Our first impulse is to use a quarter inch screw if we can. Sure, it might not be the final word on secure fastening, but it's super convenient and pretty ubiquitous around our studios. While the color spike has a quarter inch thread, it's not intuitively placed or integrated. In fact, I was using the spike for months before I found it. It's on the bottom of the spike and looks like a screw that's designed just to hold the unit together. It's also recessed, so while it has a small handle to make it easy to screw and unscrew without a coin, this handle easily gets jammed in the recess, meaning that you'll need a screwdriver or pen to be able to remove the screw without a coin. So what's the point? 
Also, part of the reason it feels like this is a screw that is in place to hold the spike together is because it is a screw that is in place to hold the spike together. When you remove it, the piece of plastic holding the first bit of diffusion in place comes loose, which means your diffusion can easily fall out of the spike. Because the light is going on a light stand, this essentially becomes the bottom of the spike, and you're suddenly fighting gravity, trying to hold the diffusion and the plastic stopper in place while you thread the stand. It quickly adds up to way more hassle than should be considered acceptable on a piece of studio equipment. This isn't a higher functionality concern. Attaching a light to a light stand is base level functionality, and for all its pretty colors, the spike can't even achieve that rudimentary marker of success. But it doesn't end there. The wall plug is at the opposite end of the spike, so once you're on a light stand, the plug is as far away from the ground as possible, and you're having to travel the power cable the full length of the spike just to plug it in. So it's a headache to get it into a light stand, and then it's a headache to power. Well then, why not use the battery? First of all, because the battery sucks. Let's back up. Internal batteries in general suck and have no place on professional equipment. There's no ambiguity here. Being able to swap batteries efficiently is a must for any production environment. Was it really cheaper to build an internal battery than to have a plate that accepted Sony MPs? I doubt it. So we have to assume that it was done because the designers thought it would be clever to have an internal battery solution instead of hewing towards industry standards. Congratulations, you're an iconoclast. Unfortunately, Bitbanger, it's for all the wrong reasons. This is a message to all manufacturers. We are on set for full days. Don't make power a point of friction. I'm not saying that you have to build your gear with solutions to accommodate every shoot. That's impossible. I don't expect that any piece of gear could remove all friction. I'm imploring you to not add friction. I was getting about 30 minutes of battery life max when the spikes were new. Regular use has brought that number down even lower. When the batteries were fresh, we'd rarely rely on them for anything other than leaving the spikes on as we swapped power leads, and now we keep our fingers crossed when we do that. I admit, when swapping leads, it is nice to have a battery built into the device because it means the DP can continue working on lighting while an assistant runs cables. It's a perfectly serviceable consolation prize, but still a consolation prize. The real headaches start with the rail system that is built into the spike. If you plan to attach barn doors or use the packaged light stud adapter, you need to get acquainted with that rail system. Basically, the pieces slide into the rail and then you can tighten screws locking them in place. This is the essence of the kind of arrogant design that plagues Apple products. The idea being that the designer has found a perfect solution and we all need to adjust around their ideals. With Apple, it's not so bad because you have third parties developing accessories to accommodate their bullheadedness. With color spikes, it's a massive headache for a couple of reasons. The first is that this is a niche product and there aren't any accessories other than the barn doors and the stud adapter that come packaged with the spike. The second is that there's no need for the barn doors to be sliding up and down. They fit in one position and that's that. A quarter inch thread for the barn doors would have made more sense, been more secure, and allowed more options when mounting because you'd have threads around the entire light. The third reason is that the system just sucks. If you want to attach the light stand adapter, you have to take off half a barn door and thread the adapter into the rail before re-threading the barn door. This is to say nothing of the fact that the barn doors are held in place with these tiny proprietary rectangular washers, which are insanely easy to unscrew accidentally and lose. I've already lost two, reached out to Bitbanger multiple times about getting replacements, and been told they'd send me some. Of course, they never arrive, so after a while I reach out again, get promised replacements, and then they never arrive. I have even offered them money. 
Like, I am happy to pay five bucks plus shipping and handling for a bag of stupid replacement rectangular washers that shouldn't exist in the first place just so I can keep using the stupid proprietary barn doors that I hate using anyway. Of course, this all adds up to a huge do not buy. These are really fun LED rods to play with, but they are not worth the price of admission. The headaches of poor attachment options, the lack of replaceable batteries, and the too clever by half approach to accessories makes this one of the lesser options on the market. Add to that the fact that Bitbanger has pivoted from LED rods to $100 sleep masks and the company is not inspiring any kind of confidence. This isn't rocket science, Bitbanger. It's a good LED rod with some really clever animation programming and a great app. Why you've abandoned it is beyond me. Honestly, these rods feel like the original Blackmagic cinema camera. It was an interesting camera that was fundamentally unusable for a lot of the same reasons. While their original camera was more hassle than help, it is what led to the Pocket Cinema series of cameras, and those are silly dope. Iterate on your design, release a spike with more universal connections and no proprietary nonsense. Include a swappable battery and the option to get a double bright pro model and you're golden. You put all these resources into research and development, built up a reputation as a creative and ambitious player in the LED rod environment, and you're just gonna leave it all behind for $100 sleep masks that nobody asked for? It's your business, not mine. It's just frustrating because you've worked thousands of hours to bring these lights to market and you're so close to greatness. There's a reason they call it the longest yard, but you need to travel those last three feet or everything that came before was a bit of a waste. All that said, there's one thought that sticks in the back of my mind. My spikes are a couple years old at this point. They've got some miles on them. But if someone offered to buy them, even at the cost of brand new spikes, I honestly wouldn't sell them. I actually use them every day. They work really well as set them and forget them studio lights. The app is well built, fun to use, and the animations you can cook up with their software are versatile. I would never buy these rods again. But I would miss them if they weren't in my kit, but I can't recommend that you buy them. There's some good stuff under the hood. I just wish it was better. And also, I wish Bitbanger would take my stinking money and send me some of those stupid rectangular washers. I hate them as I hate hell and all Montague, and yet I'm drawn to them, if only to be able to use the barn doors properly again. That pretty much covers it for the color spikes. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, subscribe for weekly film and tech videos. You can also like and comment, but don't feel any pressure. If you are freaked out at how much you liked this, we have a Patreon and you can go have your mind blown all over again if you want. We've got our free light leak plugins for download at our website. You can find all the links for all this stuff down below. Again, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for watching. Now, please go burn a copy of Mein Kampf. Bye.